Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to download custom levels for Hotline Miami 2, relocate the files to your local level folders and being able to edit those levels with a level editor by using a decompiler. Now if you don't know what I mean by this, let me demonstrate the problem by downloading a custom level via through the Steam Workshop. Let's just go with Fire Sale, made by Perforator. You go to subscribe and you have it downloaded. Now if you downloaded a level from the workshop, you'll find the level in the download category inside Hotline Miami 2. So in order to edit a downloaded level by yourself, you have to move that downloaded level to your local level folder. To do this, you have to go, in my case, it's the fo folder is called Steam Times because funny meme. Then you go to Steam Apps, to Workshop, then Content, then to 274.170. Usually you can find that folder at Program Files x86, and then to Steam, Steam Apps, Workshop, Content, etc. In that folder you can see all the downloaded single levels and campaigns. In my case I sorted them by the date I subscribed them to. So. You can see I downloaded Firestarter just recently, so naturally it is on top of that. To prove that it's FireSell, you just go to you can also go to the .hlm file, go to edit with notepad and you can see the level name is FireSell. Now with that out of the way, we're going to copy this level folder and paste it over here, which is at Documents, My Games, Hotline Miami 2, Levels, Single. Gonna, we can also do it with, with campaigns, but we, we are gonna do single for now. So we paste the level over here, and now you have a downloaded level inside your local level folder. Let's start the game and try to play it. Okay, now we can see Fire Cell is both on the download category and in the local. You can even play it just fine. But the problem is that you can once I hit E and then enter, the game is going to crash. Let me show you. I can also prove it right here. Now we have a crash report at the very time. To fix that very problem, we need to use the aforementioned decompiler. To understand the decompiler, let us see the differences of a downloaded level and a local level that I have created before. So, we have fire sale over here and one of my levels over there. Do you see a difference? The downloaded level contains a .csf files for cutscenes items, NPCs, which are also for cutscenes, a .play file, and tiles file. So a floor without a cutscene only has .play and .tiles. A local level, on the other hand, has a few more things. Not only does it have everything that the downloaded level has, but it also has a .object file and a .wall file. It means when you upload a level to the Steam Workshop, those two files are getting compressed into the .play file for each floor. I don't really know why that is, it's just like a probably a very technical thing that I'm not familiar with. So what the deep compiler basically does is to separate that .play file for each floor into those, into the respected local versions as in not, as in it creates also that dot object file and those dot wall files in order to do this you have to go to the link that is in the description either the pastebin link or that very link inside the inside the thread then you go to download and download the decompiler inside the level. We can see it's already located to fire sale and you have to save it as either a Python file or go like to all data and write .py. Um, 
The thread also says that you have to install Python in order for that to work. I guess I have done that long time ago. And here we can see in the, low, in the downloaded level that there is now a decompiler. Now let's do the fun part. Let's do some magic. First, you go to, you double click on the decompiler and you can see it opens some kind of terminal. There, all you have to do is to just type in the floor number and either E or D. The difference between E and D is that E turns all the enemies inside a combat floor to items so that you can navigate them inside the editor while using the item tab. Whereas when you press D, the enemies inside a combat floor turn into enemies. It means you can move around them inside the editor while at the enemy tab. I don't know, this is just to bypass a few editor limitations regarding the enemies. Like if you play as, I don't know, Jacket, you probably cannot play a level that has Colombian enemies. And if the enemies are all items instead of actual enemies, you can fight Colombians as Jacket. That's only one example for that. Now for Fire Sale, we're just going to go to zero in the first floor's case, you can just do E since it ha doesn't have any enemies. And it says done. Enter to close program. Now you can see the files have separated. And now the first floor has also an object file and a wall file. Now let's do the same thing with the other floors. Let's do one E again. Then we go to two D this time, see how how much of a difference this makes. Let's do, hold on, 3 E again. And for our last floor, D again. Very well, let us start the game and see how it goes. So as we can see, the level is still there. And now let's hit E and enter. And now we can see level is editable. We can also change to a cutscene window as you can see and navigate through all the other floors. In the first floor you can, let's just, okay, let's turn off the grid for a moment and the wall guide because it's a bit annoying and see that the enemies do not move around well while you are in the enemy category. That's because we changed them to items. That means you have to go to the item category in order to relocate their positions. And if I remember correctly, that one is the other way around. Now, oopsie, now we see that the enemies don't move when we are in the item category. What's happening? <laughs> but we have to change to the enemy category again in order to move those around. Now let's just say that that one's just too unfair and shotgun dodging is way too hard to do. So we're just gonna relocate this mafia dude over here. And the and for good measure just also put that silencer a, f a little further away and that pesky fat guy like right down the corner. And, they, and that's pretty much it. You can just change the level, do whatever you want with it, <laughs> make it easier, so to say. Um, that guy over here. Despite all the easier enemy location, I still kind of suck at this game, <laughs> as you can see. And the reason why the mods look all so weird is probably because all the mods are not inside the global mods folder, but inside the levels mods folder. Huge difference. 
There is no guarantee that it's going to run properly and actually still crash the game, because the editor's performance is a bit questionable from time to time. But nevertheless, that's how you are able to just decompile levels and be able to edit them, edit everything all by yourself. Now let us try to do the same thing with campaigns. Now it is a slightly different process compared to single levels, but it is basically the same thing with the only difference that there are a few extra steps before using the decompiler. As an example, we're going to do... Let's go with the roll. I think that's the one. Okay. We're just gonna copy that campaign. Just same process, you go to the workshop, click on your desired campaign, and download it. You copy that campaign and paste it in the campaigns category instead of a single level one. Now you can see the difference between a campaign and a level. It's that it's basically a whole collection of single levels, all separated in either intro, main, which are the combat levels, or outro. If I remember correctly, Neural has three levels, means there's an intro 0, 1, and 2, a main 0, 1, and 2, and outro 0, 1, and 2. So in order to decompile each level, you have to separate those intros, mains, and outros into several single levels and rename those intros, mains, and outros to level. What I mean by this, let's just go... I'm gonna do the first intro and the, I guess, the second main level. So we just pick up intro zero, copy it, and just make a new level. Uh, let's just go over here. Copy and paste this one. And just replace all of that. You can also just delete everything else. And now I need the decompiler. You can also just copy and paste or cut it out. What matters is that the decompiler is inside the level. So now the last thing you have to do in order to make it into a single level is to change those .hlm and ver files into level. You just rename them into level instead of intro zero and rename all those intro zero underscore zero into level zero. Once that's done, you just click on the decompiler again. And since it has only one floor, you can just go to zero and E. That's it. Now we have a single level file. Okay, so now we can see that we have another level which is called online. And if we go to edit, we can actually see the level. Now we can also change to the cutscene window. There's everything inside. You can change it however you want, or if you think the interior needs a little redecorating, you can also do just that. Just place the position of a bed and aquarium, because why not? As you can see, the decorations are different. In order to get that to your campaign, you just have to edit the already existing campaign with the updated single level file and then save that very campaign. That should really be it. Now, last thing I want to show you is how to do the pretty much the same thing, but with a level that has several flaws. It's pretty much the same process. There's just a little more work to do, I guess. So you go to a new level. You just make a new level again, delete all that stuff. Now you go to main one. You first you rename the HLM and ver files into level. The other files into their respective floor names, I guess. In that case, it's level zero. The other two are level one. And the last two being 
level two. Then you go to the decompiler again. Let's do zero E. One D and two D again, I guess. Doesn't, I mean, it's really up to you which one of those numbers you wanna do. Now we can see there's another level. All you have to do is just press E and enter. And now you can see the level again, minus the mods, I suppose. Now we can see in the first floor, you can move the enemies while on items tab. And here it's not the case. You have to go to the enemy tab. And same thing with the third floor. Yeah, that's it, I guess. Now, as I said before, the process with the outro files is pretty much the same. You just make a new single level file, copy and paste the outro files, rename them into level and use the decompiler in order to make them available to your local level folder. If you have any questions, just feel free to comment on the video. My special thanks goes to Toilet Master for showing me or explaining it to me a long time ago. <laughs> And yeah, until next time, I guess. You go to...